Today is Monday, May 3rd. What to know about COVID-19 around the world, where it's still growing out of control and new travel rules in the U.S. meant to keep those outbreaks overseas. Also, America's troops are officially leaving Afghanistan now, just as there's an especially violent weekend in the country. Plus, why the maker of the Fortnite video game is taking Apple to court, an unexpected winner at this year's Kentucky Derby, and how the rising price of corn could impact what you pay for a bunch of other products. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Even though the COVID-19 crisis is improving all across the U.S., it's a different story around the world. In fact, worldwide, the numbers of new cases, hospitalizations, and deaths are hitting record highs. The worst of it is still happening in India. That country now makes up more than 40 percent of the world's new cases. And it just marked the deadliest day of the pandemic yet. Nearly 3,700 deaths were reported in just 24 hours. But India is not the only global hotspot. Turkey also just entered its first national lockdown a few days ago since the country is dealing with the highest infection rates in Europe. Things are also bad across much of South America. Brazil now has the highest daily rate of COVID-19 deaths per million people. Argentina, Colombia, and Peru also rank among the countries with the most deaths per capita. So the head of the World Health Organization says there's a shocking imbalance. As you know, all Americans ages 16 and older are now eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine here in the U.S., and more than 40 percent of all American adults are now fully vaccinated. But the WHO says in low-income countries, only one in about 500 people has been able to get a vaccine, or 0.002 percent. The U.S. has promised to donate up to 60 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine since that one is not authorized in the U.S. anyway. But that hasn't happened yet since the shots are still going through a federal safety review. But that said, it's not just vaccines that can help. The U.S. and other countries have also been flying medical supplies into India, like oxygen concentrators, ventilators and more. Starting tomorrow, the U.S. is going to restrict travel from India. And yes, it's in response to the COVID-19 surge there. Since there are so many cases and new strains of the virus in India, the Biden administration hopes the travel restrictions will help avoid a new outbreak here. The new rules do not apply to American citizens, aid workers, or other people with exemptions. But even those people will have to test negative for COVID-19 before flying into the U.S. from India, and they'll have to quarantine if they aren't already vaccinated. When it comes to traveling to India from the U.S., the U.S. State Department is already warning against it. By the way, if you plan to travel anywhere in the next few months, even around the U.S., you will need to have a mask handy. The TSA extended its mask mandate that was supposed to expire this month. Masks will continue to be mandatory on all commercial flights and at airports, as well as on buses and trains through at least the middle of September. The only exceptions are children younger than two and people with certain disabilities. It's begun. U.S. and NATO forces started formally withdrawing from Afghanistan over the weekend. And with that, violence broke out around the country. First on Friday, a truck bomb exploded, killing at least 27 people. No one claimed responsibility for the attack, but the Afghan government blames the Taliban. If it was, in fact, that militant group, the New York Times reports it would be the most overt signal yet that the deal between the U.S. and the Taliban is off. Remember, the Taliban wanted all American troops out of the country by former President Trump's deadline, which was May 1st. Elsewhere in Afghanistan, Taliban members overran an Afghan army base and captured 25 Afghan soldiers. Also, a U.S. military spokesman says there was a rocket attack near a base that's home to American soldiers who are still there. No one was hurt and there were no reports of damage. But the U.S. military retaliated with an airstrike on the Taliban. The spokesman says other rockets aimed at the base got destroyed in that airstrike. Still, none of this is impacting President Biden's plan to get all American troops out of Afghanistan by September 11th of this year. And as of this morning, that's still the goal. Well, back in the U.S., a Wisconsin casino became the scene of another deadly shooting over the weekend. Police say a gunman shot three people. Two of them died and the third is seriously hurt. Officers shot the gunman outside and he also died. It all happened at the Oneida Casino in Ashwaubenon, Wisconsin. Authorities say the man had a personal relationship with someone who worked at the restaurant attached to the casino. But that person was not there at the time, so he apparently shot three other people who also worked there instead. The casino was evacuated, and it'll stay closed today as authorities investigate the shooting. 
More details, like the names of the victims, are expected to be released today. Once again, millions of Americans are in the path of severe weather. Storms are likely anywhere from Dallas, Texas to Columbus, Ohio. The National Weather Service says the biggest dangers are damaging winds, hail, and tornadoes. And the tornado threat is highest from Tulsa, Oklahoma to Paducah, Kentucky. They could hit in evening time, too, which can be more dangerous. In fact, a recent study found that nighttime tornadoes are more than twice as likely to be deadly. That's why forecasters say it's important for people to have a plan so they hear the alerts and they can get to safety even in the middle of the night. After tonight's threat, severe weather could hit the deep south tomorrow. But of course, the forecast could change before then, so stay tuned. All right, we have more news coming up, but first, a quick break for today's sponsor. Think about everything you've ever learned about getting healthy. It's a lot of information, right? And a lot of times it's contradictory. There's the old fashioned food pyramid or different trends that come and go and have questionable research. Well, ditch the diets that don't work and let Noom help you learn not what to eat, but how you eat in general. Noom is based in psychology and teaches you about cravings and most importantly, building new habits. Yes, Noom's cognitive behavioral approach means you're not just losing weight, you're building the habits you need to keep it off. In fact, more than 80% of Noomers finish the program and more than 60% have stuck with their goals for at least one year. We don't need any more rules in life, right? We want knowledge and an effective but compassionate kind of accountability. There's a science to getting healthier, and it's called Noom. So sign up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M, dot com slash newsworthy. Again, sign up for your trial at Noom, N-O-O-M, dot com slash newsworthy. Noom dot com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to the news. Starting today, Apple faces one of its most serious legal threats in recent years. It's going to trial over a case brought by Epic Games. That's the company behind the popular video game Fortnite. And that company says Apple's App Store is a monopoly. Its argument is that Apple is the only company with the power to provide apps to iPhone users. And there are an estimated 1 billion active iPhones worldwide. Well, to be listed in the Apple App Store, companies have to agree to pay Apple a commission on any in-app purchases. So Apple gets anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of each app's revenue. But Epic Games argues that fee system is unfair. The company actually created a payment system to avoid Apple's fees and then got kicked out of the Apple App Store because of it. And that's why they first sued last year. But Apple argues it's not a monopoly since an even larger number of smartphone users rely on Google's Android technology. Apple also says the commission fees go toward an app review process meant to make sure apps are secure. In fact, the AP reports Apple rejects about 40% of the apps that apply. The trial is expected to last most of this month. The Mars helicopter is getting a new mission and seems to be helping the exploration of the Red Planet even more than expected. Remember, the Ingenuity chopper was first tested last month and became the first powered flight on another planet. Since then, it's flown three other test flights successfully, going farther and higher than before. And now NASA engineers will use it to evaluate different parts of Mars from above before the Mars rover on the ground explores the same spot. And that Perseverance rover will then look for signs of life in a crater. One of the biggest matches in the world's richest soccer league had to be postponed because fans stormed the stadium in England. It was actually Manchester United's own fans protesting against the team's owners who are based in the U.S. About a thousand people rallied outside the hotel where the team was staying before the game. Thousands more gathered outside the historic Old Trafford Stadium, even though it still shut down to fans because of the pandemic. And things got ugly. A large group pushed security guards and broke fencing around the stadium to get inside. Some let off flares and fireworks and threw things at police and security. Three police officers got hurt. One went to the hospital. This all started because Manchester United fans have been growing angry at the American family who owns the team. It's the same family that owns the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFL. The angry fans say the family, the Glazers, haven't been engaged in the actual sport of soccer and they've been running up the team's debt. They were also behind the deal to get the team into the Super League with other top European clubs. But after backlash, Manchester United and other teams left that deal completely. Well, after fans broke into the stadium yesterday, the Premier League put out a statement calling it a dangerous situation and saying there's no place for that in this sport. So far, it's not clear when the postponed game will be rescheduled. It was a surprise winner at this year's Kentucky Derby. The horse Medina Spirit won the race. 
This was the fourth Kentucky Derby win for the horse's jockey, John Velazquez. And it was a record-setting seventh victory for the horse's trainer, Bob Baffert. Earlier in the week, Baffert sounded like he did not think Medina Spirit had much of a shot. He called him a cut below those top horses. But after the race, he called him an overachiever. Next up, the horse will compete in the Preakness Stakes later this month, then the Belmont Stakes next month. If he wins all three, he gets the elusive Triple Crown. And that's it for your main news today, but now it's time for Money Monday, when we talk about one interesting money-related news story. But first, thanks to our sponsor today, Lightstream. If you're looking for a way to save extra money, Lightstream offers a good way to start paying less interest on your credit card balances. In fact, Lightstream offers credit card consolidation loans from 5.95% APR with auto pay and excellent credit. That's much lower than the average credit card interest rate of more than 18% APR. Plus, there are no fees. So if this sounds like something that might be a good fit for your situation, learn more. And you can apply to get a special interest rate discount and save even more all at lightstream.com slash newsworthy. You do have to go to lightstream.com slash newsworthy to get the discount. That's light, L-I-G-H-T, stream, S-T-R-E-A-M, lightstream.com slash newsworthy. This is all subject to credit approval. Rates range from 5.95% APR to 19.99% APR and include 0.50% auto pay discount. Lowest rate requires excellent credit. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. You can go to lightstream.com slash newsworthy for more information. Now back to Money Monday. Corn prices have reached their highest level in nearly eight years. And that means you could be spending more money on more than just corn. That's because corn is used in quite a bit. For example, gasoline, candles, makeup, alcohol, as well as things used to build houses like insulation, paints, and wallboard. Plus, farmers use corn to feed the animals we eat, like cows, pigs, and chickens. So if manufacturers have to pay more money for corn, the added cost could be passed on to consumers. So why is this happening now? Simply put, farmers are struggling to meet global demand. China, for example, is importing a record amount of corn this year. At the same time, countries like Brazil and Argentina produced less of it because of bad weather and labor shortages. Weather has affected American farmers, too. Farmers in North and South Dakota have been dealing with a drought, and farms in the Midwest have gotten colder than normal weather that impacted the planting season. All that said, higher prices are not a guarantee just yet. An economist from the American Farm Bureau told Axios, we're still early enough into the season for the market to stabilize on its own. All right, thank you so much for tuning in today. Be sure to subscribe or follow for free in your podcast app to always see our new daily episodes. And of course, always be in the know. We'll be back with much more news tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. Bye.